Jeff's Kiss, Pete and John, back with another episode. This is post Super Bowl episode recap. Recapping What's the up? Super Bowl and everything else that went along during the week. A lot of exciting stuff. Look, Obviously, game last that, night. You were in that new fresh yeah. hat. I mean, this was the best purchase that I made. They had um nice script. I I really like that script. Like they have a lot of hats like that. I uh, got this one. It's got the you know the little violet. I guess you call it pewter. I don't know um, what color that is. But they had the cool Vegas one where it's like the sign "Welcome to Las Vegas." It was all black. I was thinking about that one, but there were you had to have a team on either side. There was either 49ers or the Chiefs, and I'm like, I don't want anything to do with that. So I got this yeah. one and couldn't be more. Uh, sure of my purchase, dude. It's awesome, man. Great I'm memorabilia. all in. I think it looks awesome. And you were there, so we'll, we'll get into it. Um, yes. So let's get it. Let's let's get into it. So Chiefs win yesterday, twenty five twenty two, third Overtime. Super Bowl, and they're over the San Francisco Forty Nine ers um, in overtime. Um, can we say the Chiefs are now a dynasty? Yeah, I was uh, I was very hesitant on the uh, goat talk, better than Brady, dynasty, all that stuff. Because in my mind, for a dynasty, you need to win three, and they have been to the big dance in the last five years. They've won it three three times now. So yes, I I think that definitely qualifies for a dynasty. <clears throat> I would agree. Um, there's just things that. I thought that, I thought the Packers were going to be a dynasty with Rodgers, and it just never happened. And Mahomes just figures things out, man. I mean, just like Brady, you know? Mm-hmm. It's nothing super special. When you need a play or you need something, You just he just feels it. He's faster than people think. Um, he can make every type of throw. He knows when he needs to take it himself. He knows when to check down. Um, he's and Andy, I mean, Andy Reid though. It's I mean, so, obviously it's helps so hard, him like, with the play calling too, right? Yeah, of course. Because, and it helps so it's helped so much to have um, Andy Reid. So you have an offensive minded coach. Jordan Love benefits so much from Matt Lafleur. So it, the match of Andy Reid with Mahomes is huge. So we can definitely say the Chiefs are a dynasty. Mahomes on that drive where they needed a field goal and then where they needed a touchdown in overtime. It's just amazing. Like the, his pocket awareness, he knew when to run. He's so much faster than people think. Um, mm-hmm. He really, really is. I mean, I, I watching Jordan love this year and I'm like, Oh, he moves pretty well, but I, but I've watched Mahomes for years and I'm like, he's still not as fast as Mahomes. Mahomes is faster. Um, we were talking about this make, yesterday. With and you can make um, o- you over the head throw, over the head throws, side throws, a- any type of throw you want. But he knows he can. F- his pocket awareness is just incredible. He's just amazing. I I can't believe I'm saying this. He's he's probably better quarterback than Rodgers. Um, Rodgers in his prime was great, but you know Rodgers' inability to make plays in the Super Bowl and and this. Kansas City Chiefs, Chiefs team was not a very good team. Again, we'll Their talk offense, about this. The worst offense we've seen. 100% like you're saying, lead, with, leads the league in offensive penalties, offensive holding penalties, and leads the league in drops. And he overcame all that. He won on the road in Buffalo. He did everything you needed to do to win. I I think he it's Brady and then it's Mahomes. I think he's he surpassed Montana. I, I he's better than Rodgers. I mean, there's nothing else I can say at this point. I mean, if that that last drive didn't show you like how great he is, um, I don't like you just don't understand football. Like well, to, in big to games credit, and pressure what situations. You, what you were talking about his uh, ability to make those throws, John. Like that is not by accident. That is all. Um, you've seen quarterbacks, right? He does plyometrics where uh, spine mobility, leg mobility. I mean, you've seen the hits Balance. that he took that you Balance. would say, I mean, if me and you got hit like that, we're, we're tearing ACLs. We're, we're or out, we're falling you know? over. We're, but, or, or we're tackled. I'm not we're even falling, falling but I'm down. saying just 
injured, injured, hurt. Yeah. The fact that he does contort his body on a regular basis, knowing that I'm going to have to make these off kilter throws, that is something that we've seen, you know, in these behind the scenes and quarterback that he practices that. I mean, he goes on his neck and, and, you know, stretches out his spine. Those are the kind of things that allow him to make these crazy kind of passes because he has the he has the intelligence to know where to throw it, and then that mobility and obviously the athleticism can kind of lead to what we saw, you know, over the last couple of years. Yeah, I mean, he's essentially Tom Brady that can with wheels he can move. Um, I mean, he's probably the best quarterback. I mean, he's got a ways to go with Brady, but he's 28 years old. He's been a five Super Bowl, or excuse me, he's been a four Super Bowls. He's won three, um, mm-hmm. three Super Bowls in the last five years. He is the best quarterback in the league. He's the second best quarterback of all time, and when it's all said and done, he might be the best quarterback of all time. I mean, he's just what makes a good quarterback. You know, they talk about Brady's like combine, like slow, gets knocked down easily. Um, it gets uh, gets flustered and forced to ad lib and gets knocked down easily. And Brady's like, for, fortunately for me, that's not what quarterbacking is all about or my 40 time. He goes, he goes executing under pressure in big games. That's mm-hmm. what that's what it's all about. And Mahomes, underdog, doesn't matter. Um, I said this to my dad. We were talking about it, and I go, I'm not picking against Mahomes. I go, can't I go? 49ers up and down have a better team than everybody in the NFL. They have better players mm-hmm. at almost every single position. Both sides. But what of the they ball. don't, but what they don't have is an elite quarterback. And if you look at the losses that Brock Purdy has had, who has he lost to? He's lost to Joe Burrow. Okay, he's lost to Lamar Jackson, and he's mm-hmm. lost to Patrick Mahomes. And he almost lost and should have lost to Jordan Love. Um, and I think next year he probably will. He lost to elite quarterbacks. Brock Purdy played the best possible game he could play. I think we have reached peak the peak of his abilities. He mm-hmm. it, he played what he needed to do was not turn over the football. He did that. He did everything he needed to do. I would disagree. It, he did I he I did not I, I thought I thought he did. I thought he played an an excellent game considering the circumstances his first well, Super Bowl. I thought he was stats, awesome. Stats for Kittle, stats for Debo. I mean, those are your playmakers, and you're not able to get them the ball. And I understand what you're saying. He did play a very good non, uh, didn't make any mistakes, right? My but point, my point is, my point is this: balls, he's not, he's not elite. And to no. win Super Bowls, if you're playing against an elite quarterback, you're gonna lose. He lost mm. to Lamar Jackson. He lost to Joe Burrow, and he lost to Mahomes. It's because he's not elite. I'll give you a prime example. Early in the fourth quarter. It's kind of like um, Garoppolo in their Super Bowl, like three or four years ago, where he missed that deep ball where that he he had to hit. Same thing. Debo right. releases; he's open for a deep ball. It's like ten minutes left in the fourth quarter, and Purdy misses it. Also, Purdy is not great under pressure. If you mess up his timing, Kyle Shanahan's whole offense is predicated on getting the ball out yeah. quick. Timing. If you it's like pitching. Like, you know, pitching is just upsetting the hitter's timing. If you upset well, the his timing and, pr- and pressure him, Against pressure. he is not great, and and the odds are in your favor. And he cannot beat elite quarterbacks. So if you're the 49ers, you know, you you have to stick with him. You made the Super Bowl, but he – he just doesn't I mean, have they the, made the skills. Super Bowl with Garoppolo and they didn't keep him too, right? That's what I'm that, that's what I'm saying. So like they could easily make a move, but the the thing is is like what are we if you're if you're Kyle Shanahan, you're John Lynch, what are we lacking? We are better than every other team at every position except the most important one, which is quarterback. Mm-hmm. And we can he, and because of that, we are limited. And because of that, we are never he's never going to beat Mahomes. He's never going to beat Lamar Jackson. He's never going to beat Burrow. He may never beat Jordan Love again or whatever or some elite quarterback from, from the NFC. He's just, he just – he's limited. I mean, there's a reason he was the last pick in in the draft. Um, I think we're he's, seeing I him think he's, on the best roster too, John. And we're the best seeing roster. With the you, best I mean, talent who, around him. Who's ever had a better roster? So, you, you, have, you, have five, you have five pro bowlers on offense alone. Possible mm-hmm. future Hall of Famers. Trent Williams. 
George Kittle. Offensive you MVP. Could, uh, you could argue Kyle Juszczyk is a Pro Bowl fullback if that if they mm-hmm. even let those in anymore. You have Brandon Ayuk, who is Pro Bowl and just as good as any wide receiver in the league. Also, you have p- the possible MVP, Christian McCaffrey, and you have also Debo Samuel. That is an embarrassment of riches. And they lost because Brock Purdy, if you want to be just simple, Brock Purdy wasn't as good as Patrick Mahomes. Patrick Mahomes is so good. I told my wife, mm-hmm. we were watching the game, I go, if they don't get this, convert this third down and they kick a field goal, this game's over. I've seen this so many times. Mahomes is going to come down and score. Like Dan Campbell gotta, was just gritting his teeth watching that. Right. Uh. I go, you, exactly. You, you have to kill, like, Mahomes is a killer. Michael Jordan was a killer. Brady is a killer. You have to, you have to, Step you on have to neck. fucking kill them. You have to you have knock to. them the fuck out. You do. Mm-hmm. You have to do it. And if you don't, and if you give them any life, any, you know, opportunity, they're going to beat you because they are transcendent quarterbacks. And again, they're lat. San Francisco is the be- is the better team at pretty much everybody they play this year, but they lack uh, skill at the number one position, and that's quarterback. And that's also, why they John, lost. Also, John, we can talk about uh, the differences between coaching, right? Because we look at that decision when it went to overtime. I didn't know. I was like, is it a first touchdown? Is it a field goal? I don't Well, Romo remember. did a terrible like, job look. explaining it. Romo did not say, like, hey, by the way, yes, he was uh, right in the time, but he also should have said, hey, next score, if they score, they win, which he didn't say. So Romo right. sucked for that first half because Romo isn't good when the game isn't good, and you could argue that the first half was kind of boring. Once the game got good, he got a lot better, but he sucked, like, explaining but that I'm talking to the public about audience the coaches if I, there's no reason that kyle shanahan should have the same amount of knowledge as i do sitting on my couch not knowing oh the rules of overtime right they did the interviews and they talked to i don't know if it was trent williams or somebody that says we practiced this for two weeks we knew the what would happen if it went to overtime we would uh, defer that way we would know what we had to get right 49ers had no idea that they asked the players they're like we didn't know what the rules were we thought it was well, first to score Fred Warner and that said, is we'll, we'll take the ball we'll take it and so that you know obviously is a huge mistake i understand um you know it's it's kind of unprecedented the second overtime in super bowl history but those are the details that make a coach great and just good right Kyle Shanahan never won the big game blows double digit leads while when he's up at halftime blows the game that's that's kind of his MO. But for you not to know those rules, not to know the situation, and preparing your team is the difference between Andy Reid and Kyle Shanahan. Yeah, I I kind of dis I disagree with you there. I think Shanahan's taken a lot of heat, and rightly so. He you know, and and the, here's the other thing: every every franchise has their bugaboo, right? I mean, no offense, the Bears, so, some worse than others. The the Bears have an inability to draft a, a quarterback. They just cannot do it Draft the Packers yep. the, the Packers are very good but they cannot beat the 49ers in the playoffs Matt LaFleur can't beat Shanahan but Shanahan cannot beat the the Chiefs but I don't think it's a reflection on Shanahan I think Shanahan it's a very well coached team they're really good it it's it really comes down to Patrick details, Mahomes though. details but it ultimately comes down to Patrick Mahomes Patrick sure, Mahomes, one hundred percent. But if you're going to go toe to toe with him, you have to be looking at those well, details. That, that's right? why I said to my wife, I go, they, I go, you got to go for. I go, you can't kick a field goal here. If you if you don't go for, if you mm-hmm. if you you got to score a touchdown here, you have to knock him out because if you kick a field goal here, he's gonna score. He's going to score. He they also get not, another down as well because course, they know absolutely they're going to have to score. So they get an, an yeah. extra down knowing. We'd have to go for Absolutely. it. Absolutely, and I and I think, I think, you know, if you're gonna criticize, criticize Shanahan, he he played not to lose, and you saw that through Purdy. Purdy played like mm-hmm. not like Purdy played like Shanahan went to him before the game game and said, "Listen to me, we are better up and down every position than the Chiefs. We are a superior team at every position. The only thing that I want you to do." is take care of the ball and not turn it over. And he did that, and it still wasn't good enough. And the reason it wasn't good enough is because Patrick Mahomes 
overcame everything. And that's what great transcendent players do. And that's what he did. I mean, he's that I mean, he good. Made, yeah. He and makes he it work with whatever's around him. Whatever's around him. And he knew when to run. That fourth and one, that fake handoff, he ran. And then he ran again. And he and, and um, Armstead just missed him. I mean, just. Mm. And that happens. I can't tell you how many times Mahomes is running. I'm like, they just missed him. Mm. And and then he gets out in the open field. And then people are like, oh, shit, he's fast. He's moving. You know? Yeah. Like, he's... like. People shouldn't be surprised by that anymore. And the problem is he he could flick it at any time. So he he can he can have a defensive player fall down or get tripped up just by going like this or even looking a certain way because he's so dangerous throwing the ball and that's what makes him so difficult to to beat. And so I really think it's a reflection on how good Mahomes is and Andy Reid more than the mistakes that Shanahan made. Man, Shanahan made mistakes, but ultimately, you got you, you got the best defense in the league, and you got to stop a mediocre offense with a great quarterback, and you couldn't do it, and you couldn't sure, do it. But let's and you, look and at you, the first, and you, first half and you, blew, and you blew a lead, and that blocked M- extra McCaffrey, point. I knew McCaffrey that was fumbles. Back. They held. Um, there was holding calls. Yeah. They had. Um, but Mahomes um, threw a pick too. You know, I mean, each no, team I had understand. turnovers. But like you're saying, if you are going to keep up with the best, those are the mistakes that you can't make. You can't have a false start. You can't fumble the ball. You can't give them extra possessions. Those are the things that if you give them extra, just like in baseball, if you give a team extra outs, they're going to make you hurt. I'm with you. I'm with you. But again, I mean, Mahomes had a pick. Okay, Purdy played perfect, clean football. Mm-hmm. He did. He made some great plays. That throw to use check yeah. on the run was awesome. Yep. He hesitated, juked, and then catch, went right though. and threw it. That that's a great play. Brock Purdy is a very good quarterback, but that's what he is—a very good quarterback. He's mm-hmm. not elite. Okay, he's not. He's not a Burrow. He's not an Allen. He's not a Mahomes. He's a Kirk, and Kirk Cousins. Think, and fingers crossed, he's he's not a Jordan Love. He's a Kirk Cousins. Mm-hmm. He, he he really is. Um, and again, they are this the best, most talented team I've ever like I can remember, except for the most important position, not only in football right. but arguably in sports. And you had, and that's why I was shocked when I saw the spread was San Francisco by one and a half. I go, are you out of your mind? I am not mm. betting against Patrick Mahomes against Brock Purdy. That's really, uh, to me, that's what it came down to. I go, forget everything else. I go, Mahomes versus Purdy, I'm taking Mahomes. I'm taking yeah. Mahomes before, unless, until someone other than Tom Brady beats him. Yeah, I made the mistake. I, I went against him. I took 49ers money I, line. I, I, I didn't. I, I took I a Brock the Purdy over 12 mm-hmm. and a half, and he, um, I just thought no. it was a bad beat. He took that and knee again, to it, go to it, overtime, and it went yeah. under. It's little. I mean, it's, it's the same thing with Garoppolo, too. It's just like that, that fourth quarter, like, Purdy played perfect. But to be elite, you got to make big plays if you have opportunities. He had an opportunity early in the fourth quarter. Debo beat coverage, and he missed him. He overthrew mm-hmm. him. And you just can't I don't, I do that like, with Mahomes. You just can't I was do watching, it. I was watching with my wife, her friends, and my in-laws. And, you know, some of the girls were saying, like, oh, this game's boring. That game was not boring. Like, it wasn't high scoring in the first half, but that wasn't a boring game. Like, the defense was playing well. It was a very good football game. Like, I was not bored at all. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, what I about have the half? Sure. Okay, I have a thought half on the show? halftime show, Joe. Dude, I, I was sure. unimpressed. I'll be honest. Dude, I'll give Usher five out of is 10. a great dude. First of all, I'm I, not a I huge fan Usher. of Usher. I, I love him. I thought him. it was good. Songs. And by the you way, dude, so? it got great reviews. He's an amazing I, dancer. I thought it was, he was kind a, of He was slow. awesome. Sure. I just, I didn't think like it was very upbeat. It started slow. He's got a lot of slow songs. I understand that. I just, it just didn't really do anything for me. I didn't think it was that exciting. Um, then they put him on roller skates, and I was like, okay, you got roller skates on. They put football pads on him and Ludacris. Ludacris had, like, size 22 shoes on, so that was cool. But it just, I, I wouldn't say, like, it was great. 
I would rather seen Post Malone perform. I know he sang uh, "America the Beautiful," and I was yeah. like, "Dude, get him out there." Alicia Keys sounded great. I love her music. I just didn't think like the performance overall was very noteworthy. It was fine. I thought it was. I thought it was good. It was definitely like very 2003. You got little John. Yeah. I felt. I felt like we were back Ludicrous. in high school again. Um, yeah. Ludicrous. Yeah. Um, my wife didn't know he was from Atlanta. I'm like, literally, he raps about that in every one of his songs. Yeah, How did you not Atlanta. know? That? It's what like like not knowing Atlanta? that Eminem was from Detroit or Nelly was from St. Louis. I'm like, they literally right. rap about it in every song that they have. Um, again, great game. 49ers had a better team, but the Chiefs had the better quarterback, and I, I ultimately think that that was the difference. So great NFL season, a lot of NFL stuff. It's a long season. It's a lot of football. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm looking forward to spring training and, and, and baseball, and I know you are too, but I know that you were in Vegas covering it, and I have a lot of questions for you, so super cool. I was following you on your socials, so... Um, I have a lot of questions for you about that, but like, mm-hmm. how did like, how did it transpire and f- through your work and getting credentialed and what media day was like? And I have a bunch of questions, but just tell me about how that transpired because I don't know if anyone, you know, if everybody knows because yeah, you covered the I Super just, Bowl, you were um, in Vegas. Yeah, I work for a sports betting network, and um, I run a lot of their social stuff. So me and you know a lot of the team. Uh, from from the company went out there. We had stages set up um, on Radio Row where they had guests. You know, on the network they have their talent that's on the network, and they got to interview people. And Radio Row was really cool. Um, Monday, Monday when we got there, we got to the, you know I went to the stadium, and you know I got to sit in front of the players. It was it was really cool. The media access let me go anywhere, obviously. So I go down to ground level. I saw so many celebrities, athletes, media personnel. What was and, the biggest um, celebrity you I, saw? The biggest one. I mean, I was face athletes. I mean, I was face to face with Gronk. I saw Baker Mayfield, um, Burt Kreischer. I said hi to him in passing. That's uh, awesome, Adam, dude. She- Adam Schefter. I mean, everybody. You know, Jeff Darlington. Every everyone that's covering there and um, on media on media row is everybody. McAfee, I saw McAfee live. That was pretty cool. They did their show that's live. Cool. It's right yeah. there on media row. So it was it was a very cool experience. I mean, something that most people won't get to do that. And then you know, I got there early. I had no expectations. I would see stuff on on you know television cameras fifty rows deep, right? And I'm like, all right. I mean. I'm probably not going to be up there. You know, I'll be in the back or whatever, just getting content. And, you know, I got there early because I'm just like by myself. So I'm like, all right. So what day there, did you get the there? Field. I got there Monday. Monday? There and Monday. how long was your stay? I left Thursday. Okay. So I was there all day Monday because I got there before noon on Monday. So I was all there, there all day Monday, all day Tuesday, all day Wednesday, and then flew out Thursday morning. So, but um, I did, like I said, I got there early, so I got to set up my tripod and stuff, like, right in front of all the, um, their little cutouts where they would sit and answer questions, and, you know, I got right up there. Mahomes was there, and there was kind of people there first, because I didn't know. I was kind of putzing around, just, like, filming stuff, and then nobody's by Andy Reid, and I'm like, dude, I'm getting right here. So I got front and center for him. I stayed there for most of Andy Reid, and then the 49ers came out. I got uh, Kyle Shanahan, asked him a question, and then I started walking around, and that's when I saw like the rest of the 49ers, Fred Warner, Nick Bosa, asked them questions. So, um, yeah, the most boring person. I mean, I'm sure, yeah, if you got questions, just let me know. I'm sure you want to know most boring, most fun, stuff right. like that. All right. Did you, did you gamble, and if so, how much money did you lose? Yes, I did gamble. Um are you not I, allowed to say how much money you lost in case your wife listens to this podcast? Um, I don't think she will, but it was... Neither does my wife. Don't worry about it. My wife never listens yeah. to this podcast. It was, it was over a thousand. All right. Not terrible. Um, over mm, under yeah. sleep for your entire Vegas trip. Seven hours. Uh, over under. Uh, over. Over. Because Monday That's night, good. I had a good night. Got a regular sleep over. Um, the one night when I called you it was there was there was zero on that clock, so um, <laughs> just huh? ran, ran into Wait, the wheels. Is that fell when you off. called me from the plane? Yep. Yeah. Because uh, I met up for, with for my people, buddy. For, <clears throat> for people who don't know, 
Uh, Pete called me from the plane. There's no FaceTime. way to say it. You were definitely drunk. Uh, yeah. And uh, you FaceTimed me, which was great. And I was super excited. You were like, I'm coming back from the Super Bowl. And I was like, oh, my God, that's awesome. And I was following your socials, and it was super cool. Um, and then you FaceTimed me. You turned your phone, and I was FaceTiming with the flight attendant, who was, like, yelling at me to get off the phone. Yeah. <laughs> So I was like conversing with her and then you're like, dude, I got to go. I'm getting in trouble. I'm like, yeah, like, we'll, yeah. we'll talk later. Yeah, yeah. That was great. The coolest, the coolest part of that, John, like I hate flying. So, um, after if, that, if that flying's call, a pain in air, airports are the worst, dude. Yeah. But it's a long flight from Vegas to went to Midway. Oh, yeah. So, um, so the coolest what is that, part like six was out, like five hours. Well, the coolest part was after that phone call went to sleep and then yeah, woke up in out. chicago so exactly that was nice it went by real nice. quick that's great um yeah explain your strategy on capturing content at this event so does sports grid say hey we're going to send you there we need you to get this person we need you to get Mahomes. we need you to get this or do they give you kind of creative license to be like hey just get engaging content for us like what's that conversation like yeah pretty much i was just you know freestyling by myself essentially i was paired up with the girl a little bit and we would you know we had we had people scheduled on our sets right like yeah um, we knew robbie gold was coming so after his spot here we're gonna pull him off talk to him and um we kind of just we had that you know there's xyz players athletes coming pull them off i would talk to them and then if i had some time you do a lap you walk around try and talk to people get content stuff like that so um i got a chance to talk to a lot of athletes which was really cool frank caliendo got to talk to him uh did some you know impressions chris mad dog russo that was probably my highlight talking to him I, so that's I love what that i want to talk to you about so the mad dog uh the high heat on mlb network he's like a sports radio legend with him i think they did a 30 for 30 mike and the mad dog with mike francesa and chris russo long time radio show in New every York. tuesday with uh yeah. Stephen a yeah that's awesome and yeah now he's on Stephen a so um, what did you, did you have a good time? Like, what did you think? Did you, was he cool? Yeah, he was a very genuine person and, yeah. um, it what was, what you see uh, is what you get. Yeah. And you know, I he puts his arm around me and, you know, just talking, I asked him <laughs> about, awful. you know, uh, about, you know, if he's going to take a gummy before the game and stuff. Oh, oh yeah, I'll take a gummy. You bet. I got I to gotta time it right, and then I got to get home, and then, you know, I got to work the next day. So, but I'm, I will I will partake. You know, he says that. And then I asked him about the Yankees' outlook for this season, and he just talked about, you know, all these players that got to play better. Stanton's got to play better. Rizzo after the concussion, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. And then – um, Stan, Stan has to figure out not how to pull a hamstring when he's running to first base. That would be the yes. first thing I would suggest. Yeah. And um, and then when we were done, Peter, Peter, great job, great job, Peter, very nice job, like just like a very <laughs> genuinely nice guy, and I was just so excited to meet him because he, I mean, I've been listening to him forever, and, you know, every yeah, morning. Yeah, I hate me too. Yeah, was there anyone so, if you if you can name, let's, let's shit talk for a little bit. Was there okay, anyone yeah. you met who sucked or you were disappointed by? Um, so I heard some stories. I'm not going to, if you're not, a, if you don't want to divulge in information, information, I totally respect that you're in the media, but I certainly I heard would it, love, to I heard stories dish. about, um, some, some woman in the media who was portrayed as a good girl. And it turns out she's not, um, I was with the guy and he had some stories about her. And um, there was confirmation from other off, people. You tell me off off the air here. Oh, I'll tell you. I, yeah, I'll tell you off. I'll tell okay, you everything. Okay, because I, off I yeah. definitely want to know. Okay, great. Yeah, we'll do that. But later. But there is a girl. Um, yeah. Oh, can I tell you one of the coolest experiences? Absolutely. So that Thursday, that Wednesday night, um, going into Thursday, I went to meet up with my buddy Jeff Rowan. If you remember him, he played baseball with us too. Who's a year younger than me? He was out in yeah, Vegas. Yeah, yeah. So um, it, we, he was part of the state championship team. He was yes. Um, Pete, so, this is Pete's what? just trying to shoe in. He Pete won the state championship, the only state championship for oh, our right. high school in 2007. He was the starting first Pete. baseman, power lefty. Um, every chance Games he gets, he tries, he tries to weave it in whatever conversation we're having. So you know, Always. let's just let's just Gotta acknowledge it. 
We were so, the regional champs in 05, and that's as far as we went because we, we yeah. faced uh, the number one pick from the Red Sox, uh, Mike Bowden. So, you know, we were really um, we were at the Luxor, and who do I see? I see PMT from Barstool. Him cool. and um, Diana shades or Rossini. No shades. No shades. Okay. Him and Diana Rossini together. She's, playing she's like an investigative uh, reporter now. She's like her, her role is totally shifted. Like she works yeah. from home now, and she just like is like is kind of like the female version of Schefter. Mm -hmm. Yeah, she yeah, works for cool. the Athletic now. So I played roulette with them for like two hours. That's and awesome. We, yeah, we had fun. She was like Peter, like who do you work for? Like you know, just like small talk and stuff, nothing crazy, yeah. but just to be like, I'm like playing roulette with Diana Rossini and PMT from uh, Barstool. That's that's so that was that's cool. awesome. Are you do you so like you want to be respectful? You remember the media, but you know, you you want to make a name for yourself, and mm -hmm. you're doing an incredible job. I mean, it's just unbelievable what you're doing literally by yourself with absolutely no help. I mean, obviously, I'm I'm helping you with this podcast and anything else that I can do, but it's really you, and it's really all you. And so there's mm -hmm. you deserve a lot of credit for that. I mean, that's such a tremendous achievement. I hope you know that. Um, Thank you. So I'm very I'm very proud of you. But my question is. What's the etiquette? Like, can you say, hey, Diana, can we exchange numbers? Or um, I'd love to have you on our podcast, or I do this. Or, hey, can we do some sort of crossover? Or is that sort of like you don't do that? I chose just not to do that. My yeah. whole thing is to act as you are a part of, right? Yep. I am a part of the media. I think that's you right have the move. same. You have the same pass as me, blah, blah. If something were to happen organically, if we're in yep. a discussion, we're talking, oh, hey, you do that, you do that, oh, awesome. Yeah, I follow you, blah, 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 you know. If that happened organically, totally fine, but I wasn't there, like, getting pictures, selfies, stuff like that, because I think that just screams, like, hey, I'm new here, nobody, you know, I'm not used to this right. kind of stuff, so... My thing was just to act a part of, like, Jeff Darlington was next to me when we were doing interviews on the field. And I was like, Jeff, you need to get in here because I have, like, a good spot. And he's like, no, no, I'm good. You know, just, like, stuff like that. You know, introduce myself. You know, Sal, Sal Pal Antonio. I was like, Sal, what's up, man? You know, maybe just a couple of those. But um, nothing, like, weird where it's like, you know, that guy. That's good. I just, that's the right move. Yeah, I think that's, 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 the, that's the move. Yeah. Um, no, that's smart. That's, that's smart. Um. Yeah, man. I Bert, think it's all the Bert football. Kreischer was football. there. Was Tom? Tom Segura. Um, I didn't see Tom. No, I didn't see Tom. They're like pitching um, their new vodka or whatever alcohol series they have. Yeah. Poor Osos, which basically means for bears. Um, oh, okay. So they were doing a lot of that on social. Uh, that wraps up kind of the football talk. Do you have any other thoughts about the Super Bowl you want to talk about? Oh wait, I did have a question. Um, that I didn't ask. I pretty much asked everything. Do you like or hate Taylor Swift more after this game or the same? This, just the same. I just, I mean, there's no, I don't like her music. Why would I like her? Well, you know what? Maybe um, your daughter will. And then she might be like, hey, I want to watch football because Taylor Swift is Okay, uh, John. So here's, here's my thought, though. It's a bonding that are... opportunity for you and your daughter. I, I just want okay. you to realize That's, that. You know great. what I mean? No one's That's trying totally to steal the fine. NFL from you. I, and that's not what I'm upset about. I just don't like things rammed down my throat. I don't care what it is. Like, stop ramming things down do my throat. They didn't do that many cutaways. They only the did a cutaway when he had a big play. John, answer me this. Are the girls that are watching there to watch football or are they there to watch Taylor? They're there to watch Taylor. My sister, complete, Maria, okay. who we both know, mm -hmm. was in your class. She, t I was texting her during the game. She goes, I just want them to show more Taylor. I go, that's not what this okay. game is about. I go, so, the only show Taylor after a play with Kelsey, it has to be relevant or else it does take away from the game. And I thought they balanced it very nicely. So the argument that people are saying Taylor Swift is bringing more football fans is a fallacy. That's a lie. She's just bringing more fans of herself. She's when bringing her more and Travis fans. break up. Nobody's gonna. Those same girls aren't there to watch football. They're there to watch Taylor. So they're not more football fans. They're just more fans to watch Taylor. But they're more fans to watch the NFL. The NFL is leaning into this as they should. Sure. If you're a marketer, you're like, bring it on. Bring on the more followers. Of bring on the engagement. Everyone's talking this about it. Great. We're talking about it. Absolutely. Absolutely. I just I don't like I don't like her music. I I, I don't love care. her music. I think I she's great. That's fine, music's, but it's the same if, awesome. if it was anybody else, you know, I just, I don't care. 
I don't care about right. it. And that's great that okay. you're dating and it's cute. You know, I'm, I'm just, why would I like, I'm 35 year old dude. I don't like her music, so I don't care to see her. That's great that I'm dads and daughters are bonding. Dude. I'm not going to go to her concert, but dude, her music is good. There's a okay. reason she's that popular. All right, let's move on because I know you don't like her. Um, Major League, something amazing that happened. We have been screaming like a Cassandra yeah. for for years that if Major League Baseball this. has not made a good marketing move. In fact, they basically hired an agency, an outside agency, to help them relate more. I mean, you and I come up with better marketing ideas for Major League Baseball in like five minutes on Dude, this podcast than they've actually down. implemented. Um, but they finally made the first move. And then they're essentially ripping off what F1 did, Drive to Survive, which essentially the PGA did with Full Swing. Um, what, Point Break from Tennis? Like, everyone's copying this to get people invested in players. And when you have personal mm. relationships with these players, um, you form bonds, you form relationships, you know their backstory. Therefore, you're going to watch them. And care about it's them. A, it's a really Caring good strategy. Product. Yes, they care. Make making people care engagement. So, Major League Baseball announced they are doing a two part series featuring the Red Sox. Ironically, the Red Sox lately have been absolutely horrible. Um, the, in my opinion, the Dodgers would have been a lot of better idea. But the Dodgers still a great market will, though. Still great market and a huge fan base, so you can't go wrong. Um, and it ties in nicely, too, because the docuseries is going to follow the Red Sox for the entirety of the 2024 season, which I've been asking forever. Like, give me cameras in spring training. It's like hard knocks, but there's more guys. Like, like is this young pitcher going to be able to make the 25, 26-man roster? You know what I mean? And then he has an outing. He's got to pitch well. Or what's what's the mix? Or who's showing up early to do work? You know what I mean? Who's working out? Like... Who's hitting well, like getting into some of the rap soto analytics, that'd be really cool to see like pitch mix. It's like actually if you move your fingers this way, you get more seam shifted wake or whatever. Like love that stuff. It's super cool. You're you're learning more and more about these players. The like day to and then day, their personal John, life. You know what I mean? A hundred and sixty two games in a hundred and eighty something days. Like that's absurd. Yeah, but People they're going to edit you don't, it down to the best parts. This is no, good. No, no, no. I'm saying you're going to get the inside. Like, people watch the NFL one day, and usually it's big on Sunday. Baseball players play every single day. Right. To play a major league game every single day is, you know, you, baseball, like, you don't really understand. Like, dude, they're grinding all day. You, you take one 92 to the ribs, and then, you know, you have your rehab. You go out to dinner. You wake up. You're doing it. It is a... I think you'll really get to see the grind every day. Yes. Ground balls, taking infield, taking batting practice, taking icing yourself, doing you know mobility stuff like it is. And then you can follow pitchers. Pitchers have a different regimen, as you know. Every fifth day, what do I do on my off days? I'm doing bullpen right. work. Well, what does that consist of? And why yep. are we doing this? They have mental strategists. Where you know, remember John Lester used to meet with the mental strategists. Why I can't throw to first base? Like there's a whole mental side to baseball too. Um, so that there's kind so of stuff, much, if they can dig into absolutely. that, is really going to be cool. Absolutely. There's so much stuff you could do with it, too. Front and office I think it's, stuff. Front office stuff, too, like assessing players. You know what I mean? And, and Major League Baseball is so careful well, at like, oh, God, we don't want to like show behind the scenes or behind the curtain. It's like, no, you idiots. Like That's what you should do. If you need fan right. engagement, the ma your demographic is ma white males who are over 50. That's not going to work. That's not a long-term solution. So you need, you, need, you need to pivot. Show people in spring training. Show guys, what, what do you do to blow off steam? You know what I mean? Do you, would you mm -hmm. go after, after someone hits a game-winning home run? How do you spend that? It's just as interesting if Ian Happ hits a game-winning home run and then goes home to his wife and his dog, like, or he goes out. Either way, it's going to be interesting because you're like mm – -hmm. How can you just do this when you just hit a home run and 40,000 fans or whatever? Or, you know what I mean? Like, it's just, it's going to be really interesting. And the conversations that they have with pitchers and bullpen catchers and be like, you know, like, I know we like this guy's slider, but he just, you know, I, I don't see it. I don't, I, he just can't throw it consistently for strikes. And if we get into a situation, you know what I mean? Oh, there's so, like, well, John, that's that's what, interesting there's, there's so much strategy behind baseball. And I think pe pe people think baseball's boring. Because they don't understand the mental side of it, the mental game, how much thought goes into literally every action in 
uh, decision being made. So you got front office, you have players, you have people working out, you got spring training, you got a ton of games. It's just going to be awesome. And then but also what they're interesting, doing. interesting. Go ahead. What you brought up about not divulging too much information, right? So I guess like they, but Hard Knocks does a very good job. They got all the cameras in there. Um, I mean, they're not giving away too much, you know, formation stuff, and they, stuff like that. And they that. give the team, I believe, and correct me if I'm wrong, but they believe they give the team final cut or whoever to be like, hey, are you cool with this? Like the, the team watches or some representative from the Cowboys or whoever they're, they're mm-hmm. focusing uh, has final cut to make sure that they're not giving away their game plan. Um, sure. And I think the same thing will happen in this. One of the, John, one of the other reasons... Su- Go ahead. I was going to say, look at the success of the movie Moneyball. Moneyball is analytics, front office, talking about baseball. There was very little gameplay. I mean, you saw some gameplay in Moneyball, but a lot of that is how everything works behind the scenes. And that is one of the most successful baseball movies of all time. I, I can't tell you how many people I know who don't like baseball at all, and they absolutely love that movie. And mm-hmm. have rewatched it several times. I'm talking about people that not even aren't, they're not baseball fans. They're not really sports fans. I have a lot of friends in comedy. A lot of them aren't big into sports. And they love that movie. That's because it's a great story. And right. it takes you behind the scenes. Shows mm-hmm. you. Hidden value. You know, like, Scott Haddenberg, the families that have to relocate every year. I have a one year contract, babe. We're going thinking, to San Diego yeah. now. I have to pick up and leave my family, my wife, my kids. Are you guys staying here? Do exactly. I have to be in an apartment in San Diego. Like, so you don't understand. You bring like, up gone most you, of the year. You, you bring up such a great thing, too. It's like, yes, the, the whole family life and, and, and what, you know, interviewing um, one of the Red Sox wives and be like, is it hard when they're gone all the time, 10, 11 day road trip, and then they're back mm-hmm. here and then they play a night game and the kids only see them during the day and then they don't see them until the next morning. I think that's, I think that's really interesting. And another th- interesting thing you brought up too is we talked about front office, but we also, also the off season too. I mean like the conversations that have arbitration, you know, an arbitration mm-hmm. is essentially yeah. – the, a, a baseball player going into – I remember Colin McHugh explained this really well on a podcast. He goes, what an arbitration <laughs> case is, is you going into a courtroom and you are the defendant and the prosecutor is the team that employs you and they have a whole team of lawyers telling – making a case to the judge and the jury about how right. you're not worth <laughs> – the money that the, you want. Basically right. saying all the negative shit. It's Shitting really yep, not a fun process. Thinking. So like behind the scenes that you could be like, oh, um, you know, like Justin Turner, like he's good at this, but he lacks that. Like those conversations behind the scenes or with agents like Scott Boris right now with, with, with Cody Bellinger. Cubs fans are like, why aren't they signing Cody Bellinger? Well, maybe they're waiting it out. Whatever. Like. Let's get behind the scenes. Like, what, what, what's the off season like? What are the strategies? What is the gameplay like? I'm gonna wait for this guy to sign, then I'm gonna see the market for this. There's so much interesting financials and transactions with baseball that I think would be really, really interesting uh, for people to realize and understand. Well, and the last thing, thing I'll say about brought- the Reds, go ahead. I was going to say, you mentioned Scott Boris, and I think that is also a, a storyline or a character. There should be a documentary be on billion. that guy. He, he represents so many top-tier athletes that when we're talking about, well, why, why isn't Cody Bellinger signing? Scott Boris owns the market. So There's now a he reason gets to decide, that. I want him to sign first because he will set the market. My other clients will follow suit. So I'm waiting for that team who has more money, like that kind exactly. of stuff that you're – yeah. That is so interesting, and I think people right. want to see that. And when you know that stuff, it makes more sense. When you educate your audience and make mm-hmm. them, when you when you make your audience smarter, you make the product better. You know what I mean? Because then you get them invested, and then you get, and then you do this stuff with their families and at home, and oh, this is what we cook for dinner, and then you mm-hmm. get them invested, and then you're teaching them stuff. It's it's just it's great. And the other thing, too, it's a multi-part series with the Red Sox. And then it's also looking back at their magical 2004 season. And so right there, 
is just gold. You get yeah. Theo back, you get Francona, you get Millar. I mean, one of the greatest comebacks ever, down 3 nothing in the ALCS, and they come back and beat them. Um, it's just great. It's just there's so much there. And also Theo just went back to, to the uh, back. to the Red Sox. So mm-hmm. um, so it just really ties in nicely and something that I think Major, ba- Major League Baseball hopefully oh. will replicate going forward because it's only going to help. Also, putting their highlights on TikTok, like – you leveraging social media, like letting go of all their pre- proprietary rights and just, you know, so what? Just like, it's all about engagement. And I feel like I'm talking to people at work, but like one, good, one good, thing. good content. Don't be precious with your stuff. Just try new things, test it out, see what works, see what doesn't, but be vulnerable. And I think some that's something that Major League Baseball hasn't done. They're and very you know conservative. And that doesn't work in today's landscape. That's why the NFL is so much more popular than anything else. Like they lean into things like Taylor Swift, Travis Kelsey. Right. They lean into that stuff. That's they're they're smart. Major League Baseball doesn't, and they're starting to. And thank God that they are. Um, it's a long time coming. Imagine if you got to have the behind the scenes look at teams whining and dining free agents and the the stuff that you don't understand like not That's you but I'm saying point. like people i read that book yep. the cubs way when john lester how came do they to get Chicago, lester they put a dvd together and made put it on uh the the marquee and said john lester coming in bottom of the seventh like they put they have a whole team to simulate what it would look like when we win the world right. series and we show exactly. and we know that your wife is pregnant so we have the best team of doctors right here in chicago or we have you know we know that you love chinese food we have a huge you know asian influence or whatever like exactly. the whining and dining of free agents bringing them in what they do the things that they show them how you fit in our culture exactly. that stuff is so cool 100 percent. this is what i'm talking about we just fleshed out an entire marketing plan in 10 minutes that, they, that yep. we've been talking about for years and they're not doing it it's, it's just it's so stupid and that's why we're literally going down to florida for spring training in march and we're going to be doing some of this stuff because no mm-hmm. one else is doing it. <laughs> right. I think you and I have had it where we're like, fuck it. We'll do it. Do it ourselves. And, I'm, I, and yeah, absolutely. So that's really exciting. And it's a long time coming and I'm super pumped about it. So yeah, that's it. All right. That was good stuff. For sure, man. I guess, I guess we're on to, we're on to baseball now. We're on to baseball. This is good always like the season. dead period. I'm, this yeah, is like a dead period a dead for content, period. at least. Like I'm, I always struggle. I remember every year once football's done and that little lull before baseball actually starts. You know, or March Madness you know, or something pictures. like that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But you know, for me, it's like I don't give a shit about basketball, and so it's no, always that little lull, that month or two, where I'm just like, oh man, struggling right now. But we'll get through yeah. it. Yeah, for sure, man. And I'm super pumped about the spring training trip. I think, I think we're a go for that. Um, so I'm really really pumped about that and um again thanks everybody for listening really appreciate it it was long football season um your chicago bears have a lot of big decisions to make uh come the draft as they have the number one pick i think that's something that we'll delve into not right now let's give it a break the season just ended in a couple months i'm feeling pretty good about my team and the direction that the packers are heading so um, should be a fun football season coming up, but uh, I think you and I are looking forward to baseball for sure. 100%. Hell yeah. Man. All right, guys. John, I will see you next episode. Sounds good, buddy. Thanks, everybody.